Are you ready? This is the Texas Cornhole Show. My name is Grant Upchurch. This is Jonathan Zarzinski. Doesn't he look so good? I've been working out. <laughs> Actually, I haven't worked out that much. I've just been not eating as much. That's the trick. Well, you're doing. You're making great progress. I'm trying, bro. I'm trying. Yeah. I've got. Uh... And I had no shame throwing back that burger <laughs> for lunch earlier. Sorry, man. Yeah, and onion rings. Yeah. Okay, you didn't have to add the onion ring part. But uh, yeah, just don't eat as much, and uh, I'm not eating uh, carbs. So helps. If you want to cut weight, that's the trick. Drink a lot of water, don't eat carbs, and you can cut weight. Now I gotta like do the real work. I gotta start working out and do the real work. But the first twenty pounds is easy. Um, so Grant, this is the Texas Cornhole Show. We talk about all things Texas and cornhole. Yes, we do. Yeah. And we've uh, had an eventful last two weeks, huh? It's been eventful. Yes. Uh, we had an ACL where um, some Texas showers, ap- Texas players absolutely showed out. And we also had uh, the TCL SIG 4. Yes. In and Lubbock, Texas. As everybody knows, the signature series are the best cornhole events. Anywhere? I've yet to be to a cornhole event that can compare. Maybe they get down in Europe. We don't know. They don't. No, it was small. <laughs> I, I had one in France. <laughs> okay. It was tiny, man. Um, but yeah, an incredible event. And as our viewers know, we always have a draft. Yes. And I've been dethroned. Yep. And I remain the loser. <laughs> yeah, you lost the bet. I thought it was going to be Dan, but I it's not. It's going to be Dan, but by two points, which honestly, I have no one to blame but myself. Grant's the big loser, taking the big L, which means he has to buy the four of us dinner. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. so McDonald's. Gonna... McDonald's for everybody? No, we'll go to a nice little place. I mean, I knew JD was going to give me a run for my money. I mean, he's another dude that likes a spreadsheet. He's an engineer at heart. Me too. He's actually still an engineer. I was only an engineer for like a few years. <laughs> but he's he's an engineer and he like loves data and spreadsheets. I mean, he had his own thing going. He wasn't just looking at SPR. He was looking at SPR and when he was calling the uh, spasm, speakasm, sp- something like that. And that was kind of the the metric that Texas Cornhole League uh, publishes, right? When you go look at your uh, rankings, you can go see what yours is. And it's like an SPR, but different. And he was using all that stuff and he won. So good for him. And he won by a lot. Yeah. Well, but actually, on. so here's the deal. Yeah. I want to add this part in there. The only reason I lost is because of pro and elite singles. All right. And I actually did better in every other category besides that. Well, I won singles. I'm not saying that I won it. I'm saying I'm saying I won singles. That's all I want to say about that. <laughs> but I lost, lost because doubles. half of my doubles team didn't even make the cut. Oh no, uh, JD didn't get one of the lower brackets. He all didn't of his... one of those. Yeah. And you know what sucks? And I said this when we did the draft. Literally, if I would have picked Haley and Baron. You wouldn't have got last? I wouldn't have gotten last. <laughs> they were in the finals. That's so great. I picked them. Somebody had to believe in them, and it was me, and they were in the finals. That's not how that should work either. <laughs> but yeah. she was, had a good old time rubbing that in my face. But, yeah, that was great, man. Uh, you know, the draft is a lot of fun. It makes it more interesting for me. Hopefully, JD will be back to to uh, defend his title. I, I hope so. He, I hope he comes back. I think back. he went pretty well. You know, JD, the Someone's got to give you a run for your money. <laughs> yeah, just keep getting free dinners off of uh, somebody else. Yeah. Um, yeah, good good job to JD Thompson. And he's definitely like piqued my interest. Now I want to try a little bit harder. All right. And give him a run for my money. Because you know, you gave me a lot of data. So typically, you know, I go through and I make my own spreadsheet, but Grant was able to give me outputs from Scoreholio. Yep. So it's so much easier. But well, I don't know if I want to get into this. I recognized a flaw of how I was picking players, especially in doubles. Well, in doubles, it, it was combined stat. I was going off the mean and I was not looking at if one of the guys on the team had a low and one had a really high. Sorry, buddy. You know, so one of the teams was that one of those. <laughs> Actually, two of them were, and they neither one of them made the cut. But anyway, congratulations to JD and uh, everybody that was on the teams. I hope you all enjoyed the draft, and we're going to keep doing that. I think that we might even bring some other people on to draft. The lower divisions. The lower divisions. That way we can still – we'll make our focus just the upper divisions, yeah. and that way we can still get the lower divisions uh, – involved yeah but the fact is 
Um, and I know we've kind of said it a number of times that we're just picking names off a list yeah. when it comes to those lower divisions. So we need people to actually know what's kind of going on. And maybe get some people from different regions, like West yeah. Texas, like Joe Arias, yes. uh, who does some of the commentating. I think maybe he and his buddy would be a great uh, add-on if you guys are watching or listening. Hit us up, man, for the next one. The next one's in Waco. Um, but let's let's talk about it a little bit, man. Sammy Soto. is Sammy, so Sammy Soto is the best player in Texas right now. Is that... Is that fair to say? Is that true? It's, I want to say that's fair to say, but I'm a little biased. At the end yeah. of the day, he was at that same open as the other guys the week before. Yeah. And, you know, they had a bit, a little bit deeper of a run. But at the same time, when he came back to the TCL and played those same guys that finished all the way up there, he, he, yeah, it, tore it up. if you don't know, Sammy Soto won both doubles and singles. Yes. And, Throwing his, a huge PPR. His PPR was bonkers. Like 10, 10 and a half at the whole Yeah, tournament. 10 and a half to 10, 8. Yeah, it was just insane. And it's happening at just the right time because the big pro season that he qualified for at the end of last year is starting up in like less than a month. The, right the, the, the kickoff point. is the beginning of the next month. So, dude, he's, he's firing on all cylinders and he's ready to go and it's going to be exciting. You know, we've talked about rookie of the year. You know, and who our favorites are, and dude, Sammy Soto's looking really good right yeah, now. Yeah, I'll be interested in seeing how that shakes out because I'm wondering how does ACL weigh certain factors with those awards? Because um, you know, if Sammy goes out here into these nationals and kicks ass, will him not having as many open finishes as Trader hurt him? So it's a vote in. My understanding is it's like the Oscars or the Tonys. Like there's a select group of people that get to vote, and that's how they do it. That's my understanding. I don't know if that's correct, but I don't know a lot about ACL. But my understanding, because I think the big ass bros are talking about how they were voting uh, on these things. So I think they, they pick a select number of people that are involved in the media and part of the league and they vote. And that's how they get player of the year, rookie of the year, all that stuff that they award at the gotcha, end of the season. Gotcha. Which the award show is pretty cool. Um, other standout performances, I thought Ty Thompson did really great. You know, great performance in both singles uh, and doubles. Wait, I mean, he was throwing those sticky greeds. Yeah. Good. And he had that really crazy like walk over from the right side of the board over bags into the hole. Yeah. Like that. He Tanner Gibson, he, should, he had another big showing um, with those same throwing sticky greeds again. He had a good, I think he got fifth place last SIG yeah. with uh, Levi Haddock. And then this, and then just got second place with uh, Ty Thompson. That's great. Yeah. Cool. So it was a successful signature series event out in uh, Lubbock, Texas. You got anything else about the SIG? No, not really. I thought it was a really great event. I thought um, it was a lot of fun. Obviously, wish you can. Th uh, wish I could have thrown better, but that's the great thing about uh, TCL. Just because you're out of the tournament or didn't throw good doesn't mean you're going to have a bad weekend. So it was fun. Great experience. Um, yeah, you know, I'm going to try to practice between now and then so I don't have to deal with throwing bad again. Okay. I'm looking forward to looking seeing it. Looking forward to showing up to Tulsa this weekend and letting them know. Yeah, okay. So this is brings me to the next point. So the next... Signature series is in May and it's in Waco. So there are, are pretty much two months between now and then. And in that time, you know, there's gonna be TCL regionals, a lot of events. We're gonna have a lot of events here at AJ's. There's also three ACO majors. And uh, Grant, I have a dream. There's uh, something that we've talked about on the show before. It is the King of Cornhole. I think it is the longest standing, biggest award for a cornhole player. From the original league, the ACO, they they crown a king of cornhole, and you know we're talking like Jamie Graham, Jeremiah Ellis, Ryan Windsor, Matt Guy, all these like household cornhole names have been the king of cornhole. Well, I have a dream, Grant. Do you know how many Texans have won king of cornhole? How many? Zero, Grant. Okay. And I want a Texan to win the king of cornhole. I have a dream. I want to see it happen with my own eyes because we have the best cornhole players in the world. And there's no reason that a Texan can't go out and become the king of cornhole. Get that title, the longest lasting title. So we're going to have Tulsa, which is this weekend. Then there's Shreveport. And then there's Dallas. All right. These are all majors that you can play in to qualify for Worlds. If you qualify for Worlds, you can compete for the king of cornhole. Uh, we're a little late this season. Maybe next season we make a longer run with some more players. But I want to see a Texan become the king of cornhole. I do. All right, <laughs> all right. I'm going to. Yeah. I'm going to start grinding. Me yeah. And, me and Chase will play doubles. Um, 
and I'll make sure to get my singles focus back and I'll go try to be king of corn. I, dude, I think that would be so cool. So, and it also, if anybody out there is listening, you guys are interested, uh, I've got a lot of coupon codes for these tournaments that are coming up in like the South Central ACO swing. Uh, hit me up. Uh, I'll be happy to share some coupon codes with you. And I'm also doing um, like a, a bundle deal here pretty soon where you'll get a membership to ACO and a set of bags. Uh, and the membership will be all of season 19, which is the current season and the next season. Because I, I basically pre-purchased a bunch of uh, ACO memberships. So I'm going to bundle up with bags just to help people get started if they're interested. Recommendation. Get that bundle with the great. I've been throwing them down in bags over in here. The great has been a pretty good bag. I think that's probably what I'm going to choose to throw in these ACO tournaments. You know, it is the least popular bag that I've sold on my website by far. Well, nobody likes it. I'm really enjoying it. So yeah, far, so. it's my favorite one, too. And like Chase Lester won a major throwing that bag. He threw it against Gary Bearpaw and threw a block and collect game and was dominant with that bag. So I'm surprised people don't like it, but I just think it doesn't have any exposure. And I think eventually it will. But I appreciate the shout out. Well, when it becomes the bag that the king of cornhole threw. <laughs> a Texan being the king of cornhole, Grant. I'm serious. I have a dream. If it, <laughs> yeah, you know, if you're interested in uh, joining this journey, hit me up. You know, in Tulsa, we, we've got a house. There's a bunch of cool people staying there. I'm going to do the same thing in Shreveport. And I'm going to do the same thing at Worlds. Where I'm going to get a, a house and maybe two if we have enough people. Because let's at least have a Texas contingency there. That's what I want to see. I have a dream. Um. Also, oh yeah, there'll be regionals here too, because you have to get points in ACO to qualify for Worlds. I'll be having a couple of regionals here at AJ's, so um, you can get those points to be able to qualify. And I'll be doing, I've made a commitment for the rest of the season and next season. So if you want to be part of the dream, come be the king of cornhole. Come come compete with Grant. Maybe, maybe somebody else will get it. Maybe Levi Haddock will become the king of cornhole. Who? So on to the next one, ACL, the L. Uh, last week we had an open and in singles three of the four people that made it out of the bracket were texans yeah i mean it was a crazy showing arizona mesa arizona yeah yeah crazy showing for texas players crazy because we had gavin cano justin burton jr nobody surprised those guys no, made it. not right? at all those guys are fantastic players but then levi haddock was there the too. breakout player of last year the texas cornhole show breakout player of 2023 beat Caleb Batson, another great Texas player, to yeah. make it out of his bracket. And I was watching the Texas or the the Batson game and the commentator who I forget. I don't know if it was Wally or one of the other guys. Um he was like, man, I th who is this kid? I thought I knew a lot about all the cornhole players, but I don't know who this kid is, which just means he doesn't watch our show. Right. Because if you were watching our show, you'd know who Levi Haddock is. And you would think with the presence that Texas has had over the last few years, you would know what's going on in Texas and watching the Texas Cornhole show. Yeah, bro. Uh, maybe we should sing, send a link to whoever was commentating that game. Uh, maybe you should watch the show. We talk about ACL. Yeah. Yeah. Cover all leagues fairly. All right. So, yeah, props now. They didn't win. <laughs> Unfortunately, the fourth player won. And yeah. I'm, I'm forgetting his name. Alex Rolls. Oh, uh, okay. Well, there was some controversy, Grant. Do you want no. to guess what it was about? An ACL event? <laughs> there was some controversy, bro. No. There was. Apparently, no, no and it's true because I went back and watched it. Because once the, once Levi was out, honestly, I stopped watching. But um, Alex Rawls' foot fouls. He A was, lot? Oh, dude, like, yes. And it, it's his, his front foot. So in ACL, you have to keep one foot in the box. That's basically the rule, okay? It reads differently than that, but that's the rule. One foot has to stay in the box, and he was picking up that plant foot and traveling effectively. That's kind of what it looks like. I think traveling might be a good analogy. Oh, another basketball term, huh? Yeah, yeah. He was traveling out of the box um, a lot of times, and people got fired up about it. Um, and people are tired of hearing about it? People are tired of hearing about this whole foot foul. But I'm tired of seeing it, too. <laughs> and I use the analogy, like, if you're gambling, right? So we've seen that they're trying to have gambling in Cornhole. Yep. DraftKings last year, people made a lot of money. You know, I think the Aspros have a show, or Sean does, that's just about gambling. Um, you cannot have gambling if people are not following the rules. Not following the rules and potentially putting in wrong scores. Yeah, I think the two, and this is based, again, wild speculation and theory, right? I think the reason that you haven't seen gambling, or maybe you will in the Pro Series, but what they have to fix 
consistent statistics. I don't think people were punching in the right scores all the time. How do you maintain that the statistics are accurate? Who's overseeing that stuff? And then two, are people playing by the rules? And if they're not, are they penalized? Right? You know, imagine if you if you bet $10,000 on Gavin Cano and Alex Rawls is just crossing the line over and over again and Alex wins. Like, hey, is anyone going to enforce a rule? Yeah. Because I have a lot of money on this game. Wouldn't you want your money back? Yeah, I mean, to a degree, yeah. Because yeah. whose responsibility is it to call that, though? Well, in ACL, you can always get an official, but there's also the free roaming official option, too. And so then we saw the posts on Facebook that were, uh, hey, you want to be an official? We'll give you 250 bucks a day if you want to officiate. I think it was a day. It might be a tournament. Uh, officiate a, a, a cornhole competition. Um, Grant, would you want to do that? No. Me either. So... But it's. I think it's a good step. Honestly, it's a good step in the right direction. And another. Right? I mean, sure, but the, I also see this as a first of all very expensive, for the league. Yeah. Like how many are they going to have per? Right. But it's ACL. They're billionaires, right? No. <laughs> but uh, I'm. What I don't like seeing is you know there's a big turn. They have a huge tournament with their national pros, professionals. Yeah. They the highest level. The best players in the world. Cannot follow simple rules, and then you have ACL leadership getting on these Facebook posts and just making a joke out of it. How do they make a joke out of it? That one bald dude. I didn't see it. He just has, he makes his little comments or his little add-ins, and it's just like a joke about it. And it's like, man, if y'all can't control the rules or keep a level, a, keep a good standard for the rules for your pro players, why would anybody else in any other part of the um, nation that is doing ACL stuff respect your rules? Right. Why? You can't even enforce them for your pros. Why would we got follow them? And how about the pros? Like, do you think Rawls got like an email? No. Like, hey, guy, uh, you're, we happened to notice that almost on every throw you were walking out of the box. I'm sure that he ball. got a, hey, just try not to. And it's like, okay, yeah, nod my head. Next game, let me go out there and do the same thing. Yeah. Well, do you think, like, does an asterisk go by his name in the in the championship or in the, in the rule book? In the... No. No. Because, again, they just make a joke about it. They don't care. They don't care, right? Yeah, I think that this is an issue that's been facing the... None of the people in the ACL leadership that are making these decisions and doing these things are cornhole players. Keep that in mind whenever you're seeing them make certain decisions, talk about certain things, and do certain things. They're not cornhole players. Well, just to argue with you, anyone can play and anyone can win, right? Their whole thing is that anybody can play cornhole. But I understand your point. Like, you're right. They haven't competed at this high of a level. And, you know, props to Gavin. Or, I don't know. Like, it's hard to call somebody out, right? It's hard to go be the yeah, guy that gets I'm, the assist. Am I looking at your back foot when you're throwing? Well, you're focusing on your own game, right? Is that what you're saying? Well, it's just even when you throw and you, cross the, when you, and you step across the line, I'm not watching your back foot. Now I'm more concerned about what you're doing than what I'm doing. Exactly. It's just distracting. So, Yeah. Well, that's enough about that. I'm kind of sick of it all, to be honest. Stay behind the line. I'm sick of and it. Then, oh, and then you get these ACL pros that come out to the TCL tournament and still cross the line. And you're putting all these players in a position where it's like, why do I got to be the dick and yeah. call out this ACL pro on not following rules? Well, is it an integrity thing? Everybody knows what the rule is. There's definitely, definitely an etiquette problem. It's <laughs> etiquette. I heard some stories about SIG and etiquette. Uh, not just from you, from other people telling me stories about poor etiquette. Well, I just hope some people can come out and represent themselves a little better next time. Yeah. I mean, the jury gets it right eventually. Um, yeah, so that's the rule stuff. You know, I did have some notes written down here about all cornhole. If you want to talk about that, that's kind of an interesting. Yeah, topic. I do actually. Um, you know, because I think everyone has their own type of like style, I should say. Yeah. And, you know, BG ha certainly has their style. Yeah. And there's all these rumors and speculation and talking about BG potentially buying all cornhole. Yes. And then all cornhole comes out and posts and says whatever they got to say. It actually reminds me a lot of when the ownership of BG bought BG from the original owner. It was the same kind of communication with the audience of how they came back and they're revamped and they're just, you know, whatever. It was it was like almost copy and paste. The exact same thing. Fascinating. Exact same style. So... I have my speculation out there. I'm pretty positive. I'm pretty sure that BG has a lot to do with what's going on with all cornhole right now. So 
I, I've I've said some things on the show about the all cornhole situation where I was convinced they're out of business. Um, and I still think that, like, I think that the business that existed that was making the game changers that we all threw two years ago is no longer in, in business. It's, a, it's taken on a different form. And the biggest piece of evidence to show this is a, a tr uh, an assignment of trademark rights from Chad Littlewood's company, Utah Cornhole, which was the original all cornhole over to Stacy Moore, who is the ACL owner. Uh, what's he called? The commish? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He set up a shell company called Ghost Equipment and it acquired all of the trademark rights from um, all cornhole. Right. This is public record, by the way. This happened like a year ago. So it looks like and I, they, now I'm entering it. That's fact. What I just said is all fact. It's all public record. You can look it up. Um, now I'm entering into wild speculation and conjecture. OK, here's what makes sense to me. Chad Littlewood's like whatever amount for whatever reason. He got sick of setting timing on his sewing machines. I don't know. I've been there. I've been fed up with making bags. So Stacy's like, well, I'll just buy all the rights. Right. And then Stacy's like, okay, now I've got all the rights to all the all cornhole stuff. Who am I going to find to actually make these bags? Why, why not? It? Why not BG? Right. right. Wild speculation and conjecture. But it makes sense to me. It makes sense to me. Right. I wonder where, uh, um, crossover the line, speaking crossover the line, older man. Frank Modlin. Oh, yeah. Who created the original Game Changer. Yeah. So I looked what? that up. So he is the here's the way it works. If you're the inventor of a patent, you own it unless you assign those rights away. So there's no assignment of record at the patent office where Frank Modlin assigns his rights to somebody else. There's no record of that. So do you think he's just taking a cut of whatever's going on? Yeah. Well, if you don't assign the if you don't sell it, basically, or an assigned ownership, you can license it. So with my experience in the past, I had assumed that all cornhole had a sole and exclusive right to uh the all the game changer patent but um i don't of course it's not public record so i don't know it could be sole and exclusive it can be recurring it could have been uh for the rest of the life of the patent or it could have been like every year you had to re-up it but i'm sure frank maudlin at this point is pretty stoked that somebody is carrying the torch right because if yeah. you ask me those guys should have licensed that thing two years ago every bag company had their own patch bag and frank maudlin would have made way more money that he made with just one company doing it. Frank, you should have called me. I, I licensing is my thing, bro. But that, today, at least he's got somebody making them. That that circle, the suede breaker version. And I and I don't coming back. Yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> at the end of the day, I'm gonna be honest. I think it, all cornhole kind of releases some of these bags, and people just laugh at it. I mean, the no one takes it seriously. Is anybody playing the the game changer anymore? I don't feel like it. And it changed too, like. Those old game changers versus the newer ones I felt, they're just different. Yeah, 100%. And now I'm really curious what... Now let's just go back into the world of wild conjecture and speculation. I love it. Stacy Moore understands licensing. The dude is making all of his money by licensing a little patch on a bag. He doesn't make any bags, doesn't sell any bags, doesn't have to deal with returns, doesn't have to deal with customer complaints. All he has to do is wait for the royalty checks to show up. Right. This Mailbox is like money. the American dream. This is what businessmen in America want. Free money. It's practically free money, right? Run your league and people are just filling your mailbox full of cash. They're falling over themselves. Can I please just give you $30,000 to put an ACL pro stamp on 10 sets of bags? Like everybody wants to do it, right? So Stacy understands how profitable licensing can be and is. So why doesn't he license the Game Changer patent, right? Why doesn't he let every bag company put pro dots, put different types of patches you know killer bees had an octagon patch or a hexagon patch it was great the suede breaker was pretty cool the ultra dots are pretty cool all of those things are covered in the game is it a control patch. thing what do you mean control the uh doesn't want someone else to have a better patch bag than what all cornhole has that's the theory so the theory that they might that all cornhole had this is back at the when chad uh littlewood was at the helm he must have bought into the theory is I'm the only guy that can throw the, that can sell a patch bag and that's how I'm going to make all the money. I argue you're going to make way more money, Mr. Frank Maudlin, if you let every bag company make their own version of a patch bag and have to pay you a royalty. Because you're going to get the best patch bag that way. That's you're going to get somebody's going to come along, the best combination of materials are going to make the best patch bag. You want all these different companies fighting each other to try to make the best patch bag. That's what should have happened two years ago. That's what I was telling the attorneys on the other side is what should have happened. But nobody listened to me. And now look where, I mean, the game changer sucks. The new ones are awful. Like, I don't even know if Jamie, did, did, did Jamie Graham throw him this weekend? I, I don't know. I know he had a great performance this weekend, but I don't know if he's throwing him. 
But again, wild speculation and conjecture. This is we're just having fun. Yep. Yep. And it's you know you funny it's funny when you go into the, some of the, some of those things where you know Stacy Moore having you know uh, interest in both ACL as a company and all cornhole as a company. He literally owns. <laughs> yeah. The the company is you know it's really interesting is the company Ghost Equipment that acquired all of the all cornhole rights is managed by ACL. It's a manager managed LLC, and the managing member is ACL. Which I don't know their their business structure, but the company that manages it is called ACL. So, yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with double dipping. It's not like it's against the law. But when you um, are a bag maker and you're sending in like the name of every new material that you found and the supplier of every filler that you found, you're basically handing it over to the competition. That just doesn't feel good. No, not at all. So, it kind of I would say if for people that are concerned about that, they're like, well, you know what? I'm not going to try to innovate here. I'm not going to try to come up with any new materials or or Fillers, I'm just going to copy, which is kind of what we see in the cornhole bag business these days anyway. There's very few innovators. No, very few. And the and those that have been innovators are very demoralized because they go through all this effort to making what they feel like is the best bag they can make just to have somebody come out behind them and, hey, that I'm going to claim that as mine. And they don't have to pay royalties. Don't have to pay royalties. <laughs> don't have to do nothing. They can literally just get a set of your bags, turn them inside out, do a quick few little measurements. Go talk to a few material guys about, hey, where can I find this? And they'll yeah. typically find it. Yeah, and that's okay. I mean, that's what a lot of businesses are. And it comes down to customer service, design, building your tribe, uh, and then being able to actually execute. Like, take it from me, man. Working in the shop and making sure broken things get fixed um, day in and day out to be able to meet the demand that you can create. That's all what, what Cornell Bag Making has turned into, really. But someone made a post about that, about how the innovation stuff. Yeah. About why is there not more stuff coming along and everyone's answer is pretty much the same. Why would you want to do all that if whatever was to happen? Here's the deal. There's so many bad companies now that are copying. Yeah. Now no one can set themselves apart from the, the, the I guess, the competition. All you could do is branding and maybe have a, a, a new, you know, rising star, right? A, a phase yeah, I mean, you got to go through the effort of finding something that no one else can find, but it's the financial investment you have to make to have your own exclusive material. Yeah, and the, there's another argument there. It's not just, you know, the reason that you gave. It's also how, how maybe we've hit the limit, right? We've tried every freaking fabric that's out there at this point, and we found the best one. How much better can it get? How much better can it get, right? And I think you're seeing a lot with like um, when Ultra kind of introduced, I think Ultra might have been the one to bring a true hybrid first. You know, maybe I'm wrong on that, but that, Viper R carpet was a, a blend of the polyester and the polypropylene, the carpet stuff. And uh, those seem to be the hot new materials right now. Maybe something else will come along. You know, Surefire has got the Surefire control side that was very unique. It's a polyester nylon blend. You know, maybe there'll be something that comes along that's, that turns out to be fantastic. But um, and there's still, I have not seen, I tried to actually looked into this and try to talk to people that weave fabric, you know, cornhole specific weaves. They're, uh, would be interesting, which I think, I don't know. I don't know if anybody's done that. Kill Shots talks about how they've got a material that nobody else has that they, they just made themselves. Um, but I don't know. I think we've kind of hit the limit. That's that's where I'm at right now. Like How much more hole friendly can a bag get? How much? And I, yeah. I, can, I honestly sit back sometimes and I wonder, are these bags really any better? Right. Or have you just been throwing the same worn out set? And if you got a new set, it'd be as good as the day you first bought it. But instead, you want to go get that next new bag. That's right. It's, right. It happens at golf too. You, know, you got to get that new driver. You got to buy a game. Right. Know? And it's like, and sometimes it's not as simple as that. No. Sometimes it really just comes down to, does the bag fit your style? And are you good playing that style? Yeah. And, you know, I'm one, I'm very guilty of like spending way too much time and money trying lots of new fabrics. And the newest bag I'm releasing, it's the same materials as your greed, same materials as the fly magic carpet. Those materials have been around for a long time. Yes. And they're great. You know, they are. and so why, why am I like running around in circles, trying all this different shit just to be different? Just go with what works. You know, you say, uh, Sammy Soto just did, did crazy things with the believer bag, yeah. which has that Viper R carpet, right? Slightly different one, but slightly different, but it's the, the true hybrid. Right. So he had all that. It's a brand new bag, hot bag. It's awesome. People love it. Guess who got second place? The guy throwing Thompson. gin one greed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the guy exactly. throwing Gen One Greed. So it's, I mean, 
people overthink the bad game a little too much. You got to find something that fits you. It's just being a consumer. You know, you want to buy the next, the newest thing, right? right. The different or thing. You want to say that, hey, I got the next new thing. It's got the L filling it. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it's it's really about finding a bag you love and breaking them in yourself, knowing what they can do. Same thing in golf, like the clubs that you're used to, that you know what they can do. You know what you can do with those clubs. Um, that's what it's all about. So I just, if you're listening at this point, we're kind of rambling on but if you've got a set of bags that you like just keep throwing them keep throwing them if they're getting too slow then buy another set that's the same thing yeah yeah and you know you can buy used sets that are from the same run too are there any um i'm trying to think of like what's what the newest bag is it was really the viper r and uh like the believer right that that blend that's kind of the newest bag that's out i don't think we've seen any new carpet and it's like slower carpet. It's still like, you know, the Mercenary, the Yeti, the Tango, the Magic, right. the Greed. Um, you know, what might be interesting, it would be a printable slower material. I'm always looking for one of those. Yeah, I think everyone is. Yeah. Kind because of like two-sided surefire. bag designs are just better. Yeah. Like the Surefire but, or the Wrath. But here's the thing. Okay. Still haven't Relax. Found that one. Relax, buddy. Stay off the Wrath. I'm trying. It's the best bag you make. But... Uh, the thing is that some people will just assume that since it's not a carpet, it can't be one of those slow bags you can cut and roll. You yeah. can do all those things with the Surefire. You can do all of those yeah. things. Yep. So, again, it's so much in people's heads, right? What else we got? What I, Dude, we're just about... Uh, that's all I got, actually. Hold on. Yeah, I, I mean... Hit me up for coupon codes if anybody wants to go into ACO. I'm excited for this ACO, man. It'll be fun. Yeah, we're going to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma this weekend. If you're there, you know, swing by, say hi. I'm going to try to, like, get some content, maybe make an episode about, you know, a bunch of TCL Texan players going to an ACO event and see if they can cause some damage. Uh, we have we can see who's registered now. And the favorites, according to SPR, are Gary Bearpaw and Sebastian Barger, I believe. Well, I got the uh, cheat code. You got the cheat code. And cheat code <laughs> knows exactly how to play against Mr. Bearpaw. That's been proven. That's going to be so much fun to watch you guys play. And Levi Haddock is going to be there. I'm really excited to watch him play in this this field. Because the way ACO does it, you know, everybody plays in the same pool. There's no social. I just hope I don't go all the way out there to be like, Zach Faulkner, Levi Haddock, no. Chase Lester all in the same pool. The reason, <laughs> like, the reason that won't happen, well, I guess it, it could happen because Chase has some points. But almost certainly you guys are going to be at the bottom because they seed everything by your current ranking. Yeah, I can't wait to piss off the best player there. Yeah, so you're going to be <laughs> you're gonna be up against like one of the best teams out of the gate. Who cares? Yeah, it's going to be great. I'm going to be watching. Yeah, it'll be fun. <laughs> it'll be fun. Yeah. Um, Who the fuck are these guys? <laughs> What else should we talk about? AJ Sports. Let's, I should have started off our uh, episode by sh giving our sponsor a big shout out. AJ Sports is continuing to push uh, forward and create this venue that is totally rad. Everybody needs to come check it out. Um, and Live feed is making level ups. Oh, dude. Yeah, I we mean, got memes. This is gonna publish afterwards, but we figured out how to get memes on the live feed. So we got memes. Yeah, brother. brother. <laughs> yeah, let us know what your favorite memes are because we're gonna start dumping them in the live feed. As a matter of fact, if we wrap this up, that gives me thirty more minutes just to put more. Yeah, yeah, more on it. All right, you got anything else, Grant? Um, no, I don't think so. I think we're all Rad. good to go. Can't wait to do the live feed. Have some fun. It'll be a good old deal. So appreciate everybody for watching the show, and remember, it's just a game.